Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. A reminder to get your Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirt. The deadline to take part in our pre-Christmas sale is tomorrow. Go to t-shirt.greatdetectives.net and you can pick up a Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirt at a lower rate than you'll get throughout most of the rest of the year. Just go to t-shirt.greatdetectives.net and you can get our regular premium tee, ladies slim fit tee, or a pullover hoodie to keep you warm on these uh, cool days up ahead. Just go to t-shirt.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Rocky Jordan, the original air date, July the 24th, 1949. And the title is The Coward of Muta Khan. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, The Coward of Muta Khan. I get all kinds of customers in the tambourine. Sailors on leave and salesmen on the prowl. Guide tours looking for atmosphere and girls with atmosphere looking for guide tours. A lot of Egyptians turn European and now and then a European turn native. No matter who they are or where they come from, they're all looking for a drink. And that's why I never expect to see a Muslim in the tambourine. They don't drink and they don't plan on making a lot of conversation with anybody who does. So it's no wonder I raised an eyebrow the other night when I spotted one making his way through the crowd. A little dark-haired man in a red burnoose. But he wasn't looking for whiskey, he was looking for me. Ah, you are the offended Jordan. I was told you could be found here. My name is Rinchi Abel from the house of the Sheikh Ali Ben Lekerk. Oh, yes, I've heard of him, Rinchi. The Sheikh begs you attend him immediately, without delay. Sheikh Ali Ben Lekerk wants to see me? Yes. Oh, no. You must be mistaken. There is no mistake, Effendi. Please, allow me to escort you to his home. What's it all about? A matter of most grave import. I beg you, accompany me now. And I did. If I didn't have any other reason, I wanted to get a look at the man who was almost a legend around Cairo. Sheikh Ali ben Lekerk. They tell me that years ago, when he was out in the desert, he made war with the French and British and Italians and Germans and anybody else who came along. Finally, everybody figured it was a lot cheaper to get along with him. So they gave him a big house in Cairo with a lot of administration work in the provinces and outposts. And the government made a good bargain. His name on a tax bill meant more than a whole army of collectors. Everybody in Cairo and Egypt knew Ali ben Lekerk, and everybody dipped a fez to him. That's exactly what I wanted to do when Rinchy led me into a room that fitted the old man like a book. It was complete with incense, fountain, and native music drifting in from behind satin curtains. Sheikh Ali Ben Lekerk was sitting in a chair at one end. If he'd have stood up, he'd have been over six and a half feet tall. But he just sat there and waited for me to come over. Uh, good evening, Mr. Jordan. Thank you for coming. That is all, Rinchi. As you will, Master. I have heard of you, Mr. Jordan. It pleases me that you have come to my home that I may meet you in person. And I've heard of you. <laughs> Good, I hope. I've always tried to be fair. Well, it isn't often that, a, uh, that I'm invited into the home of one of Egypt's most influential citizens. <laughs> Religious customs are different in all parts of the world. I regret that ours make such an issue of unbelievers. When I visited your country, 
There was no such differentiation. Why are you here? For what reason? Please sit down, Mr. Jordan. I must explain. And at the same time, I must confess to being an old man. That is an issue I find difficult to make terms with. Nevertheless, for some time now, I've been compromising with my age. And as an act of pride, I have planned to record the history of my noble family, the House of Mutakan. Um. Uh, you have a question, of course, for this is news to you. Yes, there was a pharaoh. King Muta Khan, the first of my people. Of him I know very little, but it would please me and make me happy as an old man to complete the record of my ancestors. The history of my family will be revealed in hieroglyphics to be read at his uncovered and unrecorded tomb. Tomb of Muta Khan? I've never heard of it. As I say, it is unrecorded. Why, I do not know. But at the pyramid... I will find an answer. But a pyramid? Where is there such a pyramid? Where is such a pyramid? In the lands of the desert, south from ancient Giza, where the high winds are almost perpetual, lies the mummy of Mutaka. Well, I've been in that area a dozen times. I never it saw it. It is buried, covered with sand of the centuries. The scrolls foretold it. A buried pyramid? As I say, the Comcine is... Perpetual there. There is still the same question in your eyes. Since I have started to make plans for recording the saga of my noble family, I have encountered many obstacles. What kind of obstacles? Transportation of machinery, hiring engineers. Mm -hmm. But even more, threats. Oh? I have been threatened many times in my life, and such... Notes and signs have always been, to my mind, the frustration of some unfortunate, maladjusted being. However, this time, it is different. There has been a violence. Do the police know about this? There has been no time. I don't understand. Observe me well, Mr. Jordan. I am a dying man. What? The assassin's knife is foreign to my body. <laughs> That's when he stood up and opened his burnoose. The hilt of a small knife was sticking from his chest. How he was still alive or what let him sit there and talk to me with that thing in him, I'll never know. <coughs> the threats were in earnest. Well, look, I'll get a doctor. No, no, it's too late. It's a grievous wound. Who did it? I haven't much time, Mr. Jordan. You are the only one I trust now. I brushed a shadow in the darkness, and my killer is unidentified. Well, maybe if I get... Death is nothing. But I entrust you to meet my son back here in the province of Ruba. Tell him of my design to excavate the tomb of Mutakhan. Tell him that I, his father, order it to be done. Tell him that I insist upon this work so that others will know of my honorable family. Sure, sure, I'll tell him. But... And tell no one else. All right. But listen, you... Uh, disturbed by my murder. And be of good heart. It is the will of Allah. I, I... He slid to the floor and closed his eyes, and there wasn't anything I could do. Well, I got a phone and called Homicide Division and waited for them to show up. Sam Sabaya led the parade. He didn't look happy when he saw what had happened. And when I told him how the old man had died, forgetting the part about the pyramid, he shoved his fez back on his head. You are lying to me, George. Ah, just a minute, Sam. I've told you the truth. But not enough of it. You omitted some small details, details such as Rinchi Adel, why you came here, for what reason Lecoq sent for you. <laughs> Sergeant... Yes, Captain A servant, Rinchi Adel, is to be questioned in connection with this case. Alert communications. He is somewhere in Cairo. Right away. And, Sergeant, the newspaper should not be notified of this occurrence. I understand. No one is to be told that Shak Ala ben Kerak is dead. Yes, sir. That is all. That is all. 
Well, Sam, I'm not going to try to figure your moves because none of it makes and sense I to me. And I am conducting the investigation, you hear me? I do not want news of his death to be released for the present. You've got a reason. I have. A very good one. Well, do I stay around here? Am I under arrest or what? You may go. Good night, Sam. I'll see you later. Oh, Jordan. Huh? As you forget the news of the death of Shaq Ali Ben Leclerc, also forget the unrecorded tomb of King Muta Khan. What? And whatever reason Shaq Ali Ben Leclerc had for calling you in and speaking to you of Muta Khan is also to be forgotten. How did you know about it? The Egyptian government forbid Leclerc to excavate. What is unrecorded is best left unrecorded. What is uncovered thus far is best buried. Yeah? What if an old man died? Ali Ben Leclerc has been murdered, it is true. It is obvious his servant that disappeared, Ranchi Adel, is guilty. Oh, you jump at a lot of conclusions. There is one conclusion alone that concerns you. Do not under any circumstances reveal the death of Leclerc. And do not pursue this matter any further. Okay, Sam, from here on out, it's a police affair. Exactly. Good night. Then I had no way of knowing what Sam had in the back of his head or why he wouldn't talk. I guess I was sore when I walked out of there. The old man died because someone didn't want him to dig up a pyramid. And Sam Sabai seemed to go right along with the idea. But trying to forget the picture of an old man with a knife between his ribs living long enough to tell me about his family and what it meant to have that tomb uncovered was another thing. So I decided to go to the province of Ruba and look up the sheik's son. I threw a few things in a suitcase and went over to the station. I was waiting in line to get a ticket, but a blonde girl saved me the trouble. She had a lot of blue eyes and a lot of white teeth when she talked. I followed you from the Sheikh Ali Ben Lekhek's home. Huh? You were there less than an hour ago. There were others, too. Um, police, I believe. Ah, you get around. What did I have for breakfast? Then you went to a cafe tambourine. I learned that you were the owner of the place. Your name is Rocky Jordan. And I'll bet you followed me here to the station. You are buying a ticket to the province of Ruba? That's right. Anything else, lady? Your trip is unnecessary. Yeah? The Bakir, son of Sheikh Ali Ben Lekerk, awaits you at Shepherd's Hotel. Huh? I am Katila, the wife of Bakir. Shall we go? Uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> And we went to the Shepherd's Hotel, Suite 609 to be exact. The sheik's son, Bakir, turned out to be a streamlined version of his father. He was about six and a half feet tall, big boned, only his hair was black, and he wasn't wearing a burnous. He was done up in brush clothes, and you could tell where the sweatband of his pith helmet had stopped the sunburn. Come in, please, come in. So this is the fellow, huh? Darling, this is Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan, this is my husband, Bakir, son of Ali Ben Lekir. Uh, thank you for coming, Jordan. I suppose I have some explaining to do. A drink? No, not right now, then. My dear? Mm, no, thank you. Darling, don't you think... Yes, good scotch is a lost cause out in the provinces. Ice is pretty hard to fly in from the mountains. Katila <sighs> and I came in tonight from Aruba. My father asked us to make the trip. It was a secret trip. We went from the airport to the sheikh's home. There were police cars there. You didn't go inside? My father has an old saying. Sidestep trouble so you can attack it from the rear. And you were the first to leave the house, so I, I followed to see who you were. By the way, did you ask him if he's a policeman, my dear? I run a cafe over by the mosque Sultan Hassan. Oh, I'm not a cop. I sure met a lot of them tonight. You were... Uh... People don't know what's happened yet, huh? What has happened, Jordan? Your father's dead, Buck here. Dead? Oh, no. But he was alive. The doctor said he had a good five years, even ten He left. didn't he... just die. He was assassinated. Sheikh Ali Ben was assassinated. He called me in tonight. He explained a plan he had to dig up an old buried pyramid. The tomb of Mutakan. I told him that it was absolutely ridiculous. Then you know something about it? Of course. He wants that tomb excavated so the family history will be completed. But how was he slain? Stabbed. He sat there and told me all this with a knife sticking in him. I didn't see it until he pulled back his robes. Who would do such a thing? Who Easy, would... darling. He said he'd been threatened ever since he made plans to excavate Mutakan. The police are looking for a servant, uh, Rinchi Ad-El. I don't see how he could have done it. This but... message about Mutakan, exploring it. That's what my father asked you to tell me? That's it. He died for that. 
He died just for that. Darling, please. It's a rotten way to die. It's a rotten thing to die for. Oh, if you only knew, Jordan, if you only knew. He thought a great deal of it. And when you dig it up, Bakir maybe... Bakir will never excavate the tomb of King Mutakan. What? That's right, Jordan. Never. But your father ordered... Good night, Jordan. Thanks for your help. Now, listen to me. If you could have seen him staying alive just long enough to uh, tell me... Uh, but... Enough. You... I've heard enough about Mutakan. Get out of here, Jordan. You've delivered your message. Now get out. Everybody had something against old King Muta Khan. For a guy who lived three or four thousand years ago, he wasn't very popular. After hearing the Sheik's son talk the way he did, I quit trying to figure out any of it. There was something that had to be told, but it didn't look like I was going to hear it. That is, until I'd uh, been home a couple of hours and had a couple of drinks. That's when Katila sat on the stool next to me. Hello. Order up. It's about closing time. I didn't come in for a drink. Yeah, that's all we got here. Drinks. No answers, no nothing else. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Jordan, but it's not the way it looks. Believe me. No, it isn't? All right, then. How is it? Buck here isn't denying what his father wanted, what, what his father died for. The sheik says uncover that tomb. It means a lot to me to have a complete history of my family. Buck here says I won't do it. The sheik's dead. Buck here's alive. Yeah, I did what he asked me to do. You think Bakir should undertake the excavation of Mutar Khan, don't you? What do you think, lady? I think you're an American sentimentalist, and I think you're in the wrong land to practice sentiment of this sort. Look, I saw him die. But you're to be admired, Mr. Jordan, because I'd feel the same way, and so would Bakir, if we didn't know what we do. Can you make it right? Listen to me. There's one thing you don't know. <laughs> A lot of things I don't know. Ben Lecarque lived in a world removed. Every action in his life was prompted by his own father and the proud record of the desert tribes of his family. And he liked that record. He wanted to get it all. That's just it, Mr. Jordan. And that's why I'm here. Here, look at this hieroglyphic. The single picture of a man with his head set on his shoulders looking backward. Yeah, so what? It is from the tomb of King Mutakan. All right. Don't you see, Mr. Jordan... Everyone but the sheikh knew of this, knew what will be found if the tomb is ever excavated. What do you mean? King Muta Khan, the illustrious founder of the tribe, king of the deserts and protector of the weak, lived and died a coward. You are listening to The Coward of Muta Khan, today's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Have you ever been out on a stroll Sunday evening at 8.30? Well, we suggest you spend that half hour beside your radio. But if you should be outside enjoying the night air, promptly at 8.30, you will hear a familiar sound. It's the whistler calling you to excitement, to suspense, and another strange story about people who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, most of the homes you pass on your evening stroll will be listening to The Whistler. And if you want to spend a thrilling half hour with a fine story, you'll be in your living room, too, listening to tonight's story called The Hermit, The Whistler's Strange Tale, tonight on CBS. Now we return you to Cairo and today's adventure with Rocky Jordan. The Coward of Muta Khan. Well, when Katila came in my place and told me why nobody wanted that tomb dug up, it all began to make sense. Sam knew what they'd find. The Egyptian government, who thought a lot of the old man, wouldn't grant a permit. Bakir and Katila, everybody but the old man, seemed to know the story. Yes, yeah, somebody killed him to stop him from finding out. That part didn't make sense until Sam Sabaya walked in the next morning. Jordan, I wish to talk with you. Okay, Sam. I've just left back here. You informed him of his father's death. That's right. Against my orders. I had a job, Sam. The old man asked me to talk with him. You know the reasons why Muta Khan will not be excavated. Yeah, I know. But it doesn't seem worth murder. But, uh... Jordan, let us consider each other for a moment. We are both prone to temper. I've come to apologize for my curtness last night. Ah, uh, you don't have to, Sam. You were doing what you thought best. It is more than that. I must find Rinchi Abel. You still think he killed the old man? I'm certain of it, Jordan. 
Well, I'm not. Ali Ben Lekirk was destined to die very soon. Cancer. But he had every intention of living long enough to unearth the mummy of Muta Khan. Yeah, they tell me when he made up his mind about something, he was pretty sure of getting something done. Exactly. The servant, Rinchi Abel, realized this. And he also realized that it would grieve his master into an unhappy death if he were to discover the truth of Muta Khan. Are you trying to tell me that Rinchi stuck the knife in the sheik, then came and got me? Exactly. Ali Ben Lekirk was destined to die. Rinchi Abel reasoned he would die happily without the disgraceful news of Muta Khan. So he waylaid his master. Ah, that's crazy. It is hard for you, a Westerner, to understand this matter of destiny, but I believe it is so. I believe that Rinchi slew his master to prevent him from knowing the disgrace of King Muta Khan. And I'd like to hear Rinchi's version. The chances are you never will, nor will anyone, Jordan. Rinchi Abel, in all probability, has destroyed himself by now. Is that the will of Allah? It is a way of life that you would not understand. As soon as we find the body of Rinchi Abel, Cairo will know of the death of Sheikh Ali ben Lekirk. Uh, all right, Sam, but I still don't understand it. I didn't expect you would. Good day, Jordan. All that day, I sat and thought about what Sam had told me, the reasoning behind Lekirk's death. There was too much left over and too much left unsaid to make it gel. But there wasn't anything I could do. At least I thought there wasn't anything I could do until I heard a knock on my office door. For the second time in two days, there was a Muslim in the tambourine. And he still wasn't looking for a drink. Yeah? It is I, Effendi. Rinchy, get in here. Please, Effendi, listen to me. I am a wanted man. You bet your curled up booties you're a wanted man. Oh, mercy, Effendi. Listen, Buster. They're looking everywhere in Cairo for you. And they're going to keep right on looking until they find you. And you better have a pretty good story to tell, because I don't think they're going to listen to any B-plots. A moment, a moment. You, Effendi, were the last to speak with my master before he died. You knew he had a knife in him when you took me there? Of course. It was I who ministered to him the night before when he was attacked. You mean he lived 24 hours with a knife in his chest? As Allah is my judge. I found him lying on his street near his home. I carried him there and bathed his wound. Why didn't you call a doctor? I wanted to call a physician, but he wouldn't allow me. And to extract the knife would have meant instant death. My master was a strong man, and he lived a strong life. He had many small details he wanted to complete before the end. And you helped him? I did as I was commanded. Did that include getting hold of me? Yes. His last command was when, when he dismissed me in your presence. Well, the police think you did it. But why a humble servant like myself? Because you knew about Muta Khan and didn't want him to find out? No, no, I knew of the coward, but I did not slay my master. Hear me, Effendi. I did not do it. All right. Supposing you tell me who did kill him. If I knew, I would avenge his death. You're still number one. For myself, I do not care. My life ended when my master died. How did you know about Muta Khan being a coward? The photograph of the hieroglyphic. A face turned backward. Such a revelation would truly have made my master's death unhappy. Well, that's easy to figure. Well, now where are we? Ah, the true story... Of Muta Khan. Oh, I'm sick of hearing that. I've already heard it a dozen times. I know the truth. All right, what is the truth? The pyramid is not the victim of sand erosion or high winds. It is buried because it was erected underground. What? That is so. The elders who constructed it because a pharaoh must have a pyramid did so purposely, hoping no one would ever find any trace of a man who lived as dishonorably as did King Muta Khan. Yeah, he was a real eight ball. All right, go on. In the tomb, there is no mummy. You've been inside? No, but those who buried him buried him alive and left no record. For King Muta Khan committed the crime above all crimes, Effendi. For the love of the daughter of his enemy, he sold his own people into slavery and slew his own... Get down! Get down! Rinchi Abel never finished the sentence. He was dead before he hit the floor. Whoever stuck his hand in through the window knew how to shoot, knew what he was shooting at. And he knew how to make a getaway. Well, that's when I stopped trying to figure Egyptian theories on honor and family and kings. I left Rinchi lying on the floor of my office, told the boys who came up the stairs to notify Sabaya and tell him I'd be around later. I had some practical figuring to do and a couple of stops to make around town. First, the Egyptian War Office, Hall of Records. 
Second, the British Army headquarters and a colonel who'd been with Monty's 8th Army. Third, to the airport, where I grabbed the first plane out for the province of Ruba, which, strangely enough, turned out to be exactly two miles by horseback from the site of the buried tomb of that old bum, King Musa Khan. Ali Ben Kirk had been right about one thing. The high winds did blow there all year round. But it hadn't bothered the guy who'd had a bulldozer and tunneled under the sand and built a concrete passageway right down to the entrance of the tomb. I didn't know who he was, but he left his horse tied up right by the entrance. Stand where you are, I have a gun. Oh, easy, Sam, easy. It's me, Rocky. Jordan! What are you doing here? Same thing you are, looking for some answers. I told you, Jordan, this is a police affair and I will not be interfered with. Yeah, sure. Only it looks more like an espionage job, something for the army boys to handle. Well, uh, all right, you are here. Come on. Well, I'm uh, glad I found you here, Sam. Makes your double talk back in Cairo look straighter. Jordan, ever since the war, the Egyptian government has been anxious to discover the cache where Rommel's army hoped to resupply themselves and enter Cairo. And this is it, eh? Tomb of old Muta Khan. Exactly. This is the main chamber where the mummy would have been. Hmm, some mummies. Offhand, about uh, 200,000 rounds of ammunition, machine guns. Fuel oil, preserved foods, everything a fast-moving army cannot carry but could pick up and use. Yeah, right on top, nothing but a load of sand. The entrance you came by can be sealed easily and camouflaged. We have been watching it since the war. You mean some of Rommel's men might still be around? Yes. Some of Rommel's men are still around. What? Uh, uh, I shoot very well. Mr. Jordan can confirm that. Oh, yeah, that's right, Sam. She plugged Rinchy Abel back at the tambourine. Now that both of you know that Bakir and myself were the agents for Rommel, I hope you will die happily and quietly. Bakir? He's an Egyptian of noble birth. Yes, Captain Sabaya. I am an Egyptian. Bakir, son of Sheikh Ali ben Lekek, province of Ruba. Departed from Muslim practice out of necessity. A most unworthy son of a most illustrious father. <laughs> you look disappointed, Captain Sabaya. Haven't you ever heard of a traitor before? Don't tell me you don't know anything about cowards. And... Stop it, back here. This will accomplish nothing. Sorry, right, I know what I'm doing. Maybe you have something to say, Jordan. You're always so full of talk. You want me to beg for my life? I'd like that, too. Back here. You know what you have done. Let's get rid of these two, Bakir. The noble Sabaya has asked me a question, my dear. He wonders if I know what I've done. I tell you... Shut up. I've sold out, Sabaya. I sold out years ago. I sold out my country. When the Germans sent an agent out looking for a place to hide arms and ammunition, they came to the right man. They came to me. Yes, sir, it was little Katila here who clinched the deal. It all happened when I was in school in England. So, I came up with a wife. Why? Why did you do it? Why did I do it? Egypt has been good to you and your family. Why? Because it has given me a wife. Beautiful, isn't she? Yes, I see now. You see what? Tell me what you see before I kill you. Your real name. What is it? Muta Khan. Pig. Vile pig. You killed your own father. What? Stand back, Bakir. I've had enough of this. I killed as my... As surely as if you had assassinated him with your own hand. Rinchi Abel did that so he'd never find out of... Katila. He was going to excavate and we would have been discovered. I, I killed you him. You, Katila. Let go, you fool. Let go. Let go. Let go. I... What stupid fool. You'll never get away. Come on. Give me the gun. Here. Ready? This was a good place for me. For him, too. Yes, this was a fitting place for both of us. Two cowards. The first and the last... History repeats itself, Captain Sabaya. All I had to do was read the scrolls to find out how it would end. To find out how it would end. It 
it's CBS at this same time next week for another story of adventure and intrigue when we take you back to Cairo and the Café Tambourine run by Rocky Jordan. Rocky Jordan, starring Jack Moyles in the title role, is produced and directed by Cliff Howell with original music by Richard Orant, conducted by Ivan Dittmars. Tonight's story was authored by E. Jack Newman under the supervision of Gomer Cool and Larry Roman. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Another strong episode. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, I think they put a lot of thought into the character of the murder man. Gave him a lot of personality so that we would understand and buy what we were told about him. Because I've read mystery stories and I've heard uh, mystery programs where a character is described as just this amazing, powerful, dominating figure, this very accomplished, uh, very strong person. And we don't actually meet him until they're uh, a corpse, and so therefore we only get to know about them secondhand. So I like that we got to meet this man while he was still alive, although just barely. There's also a bit of, uh, I guess, a symmetry in the story, as it's clear that despite all of his strength, he's blind to the faults of his ancestors. And he's also blind to the faults uh, of his son and daughter-in-law. I also like that the son still really did care for and respect his uh, father, despite all the awful things that he had done. Because sometimes, you know, if someone is portrayed as a traitor, most of the time, particularly in the Golden Age, there's no sense that they have any positive values, that they are a traitor to everything and everyone. But they give him that color in this episode, and it does work, because they don't excuse what he did, but he becomes a bit of a tragic figure undone by all the crimes he's committed. So overall, really good stuff. And honestly, this is probably one of my favorite shows that we do right now. This and Dragnet are the ones I most love listening to. So this this was just another solid outing for Rocky Jordan. All right, well, we'll be back tomorrow with Boston Blackie. And then next Wednesday, another episode of Rocky Jordan. In the meantime, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>